Hi, it's Story here for Game Reactor. We're at E3. We're talking about Battleborn. Now, us game journalists, we can be a bit lazy at times. We like to put things into boxes, but Battleborn is kind of hard to put down into one genre. What? How would you describe the game? Okay, so Battleborn, first and foremost, is the new IP from Gearbox and 2K Games. It is a first-person shooter that features 25 characters that are completely and utterly unique. Uh, they all play differently, they move differently, they have different um, abilities and skills. And despite all these differences, they're actually united to stop a greater threat. Um, they're all located in Solus, the last star of the universe. All the other stars have been going out one by one. And it's being done by this, uh, this threat called the Varelsi. And so all of these heroes need to unite to stop them from taking, completing their work and taking out the last star. Yeah. Now you said first person shooter, but it also has lo uh, many of the tropes of a MOBA. Uh, but you also have uh, a single uh, no, story mode, sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, um, I know what you're saying, and I think there's a really good reason for that, and that reason is Gearbox. So I don't know how familiar you are with Borderlands. Very, so. very. Okay, so do you remember back before Borderlands actually came out, and people were like trying to wrap their head around what it was, and so they kept trying to, to place it using other games. And so they'd say, oh, it's like Halo meets Diablo or something like that. And then it wasn't until it, the game came out and people actually got their hands on it that they got it, and they were like, oh. And then Borderlands became the new touchstone. So now people say, oh, it's like Borderlands. And I think Battleborn is doing the same thing, um, but to an even greater degree, because there are so many um, different uh, features and ideas that are coming from these seemingly, uh, you know, in conflict designs, but Gearbox is finding a way to make them um, work all together and create an even a new fun experience that people did, I think don't even know that they wanted, um, but there it is. So you've got, um, you know, you start off with the 25 characters, and then from there um, you choose whether to go into the competitive multiplayer, and you've got three different modes that you can choose from there, or you could go into the fully fleshed out story campaign. Um, you know, those those two things are equal. I think they're they're both like really legitimate, um, you know, gameplay experiences. And then in the story campaign mode, you can choose to play that single player. You can play through story campaign with any one of those 25 characters. Or you can uh, decide to start doing co-op in the story campaign and it goes all the way up to five uh, in the co-op party. And is that going to be drop in, drop out co-op, uh, similar to how Borderlands works? So uh, we haven't quite uh, locked down the exact design for that. Um, you know, obviously we will before the game launches. But right now um, we're trying to make sure that we understand all of the ramifications and edge cases around what we want to do, um, and basically choose the path that's going to ensure the integrity of the data because. Um, in both of those modes, uh, competitive multiplayer and story campaign, you are earning experience that goes into these permanent ranks. And so we want to protect the integrity of that data while ensuring the best gameplay experience for everyone. One thing that I thought was kind of interesting was your take on the, the skill tree with the Helix menu. Can you uh, briefly talk about that? How familiar are you with nesting dolls? No, not, not really. Okay, but anyway, bear with me here. So. Uh, you know, you've got the Russian nesting dolls, and uh, I, you know, picture it with the Helix system. Um, so uh, I think you saw in the presentation, it was like that DNA-looking thing. Yeah. And so basically, what the Helix system allows you to do, and that's and that's the first, the smallest thing in the middle. Um, the Helix Helix system allows you to rank your character up from one to ten in the session. So whether you're playing competitive multiplayer or the story campaign in the session, you will go from one to 10. And each level unlocks a choice that you can make, a binary choice that alters your core abilities in some way, it augments them. And so it can really allow you to customize within the match your particular play style. Um, and then at the end of the session, it resets. And the next time you play, you start the whole process over and can experiment with different choices. So that's the first one. On top of that is the character rank. And you can take any one of these 25 characters and level them up to rank 10. So one to 10 again, but this is a permanent rank. And um, the experience you earn from a competitive multiplayer or story campaign feeds into it. And instead of um, unlocking uh, you know, those immediate things that are changing your, um, your abilities, you're unlocking things like 
alternative skins for your character so you can customize your appearance a bit more. Uh, you also unlock uh, other augmentation options that feed back into the, uh, the helix underneath. Um, so that's character rank. Then on top of that, <laughs> see where I'm going? Uh, on top of that, you've got command rank, and that's also a permanent ranking system, but that's actually your, your player profile rank. So, um, yeah, so that goes across all characters. Right, and so it's a little, yeah, badass rank. It's a similar in concept. So it unlocks things like badges or titles and things like that, like bragging rights. Um, now, I haven't really heard about how the monetization is going to work or, or the payment model at all. Can you touch upon how, how that's going to work? There is no payment model. This is a $60 uh, premium price AAA game. Yes. That's what 2K makes and that's what this is. Okay. So there's no, not going to be any, because you were talking about the unlocks and skins and stuff like that. That's just going to be unlockable in game. It's not going to be purchasable. So, uh, you know, obviously, um, you know, any game uh, these days is looking at a, a DLC yeah, yeah, of course. plan. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, I think that Gearbox has a phenomenal history on offering an exceptionally quality DLC for their games. So, obviously, we hope to continue that. But in terms of, like, any, like you know, in-game monetization or like free-to-play, none of that. This is, this is a $60 game. Um, every one of those 25 characters is available as soon as you pop in the disc, it's all right there. Okay, perfect. Now, with 25 characters, 10 that you're showing off here at E3, can you talk about your favorite one? Yes, so my favorite is Thorn, which is the elf character. However, um, she's actually kind of a pinpoint sniper uh, with her bow and arrow, and I don't play competitive multiplayer that well, and she's actually too tough for me to play effectively on the competitive side, so I actually play Caldarius when I'm in uh, multiplayer, but I use Thorn for everything else. Okay, perfect. And uh, wrapping up, uh, release window and uh, platforms. So Battleborn is coming this winter uh, for PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and PC. Perfect. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you.